All right, Bunker TV, back, despite the shadow bear. So it looks like the Boulay Butt brothers, Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley are under fire for throwing Kyrie Irving under the bus because they were the first ones to call for a suspension from the NBA. So now social media is roasting both of them for buck dancing and being good house Negroes. But not only did they throw him under the bus, Shaquille O'Neal put that bus in reverse and ran over Kyrie Irving several times. And I know why. After the game, and look, if he's he keeps making a big thing out of the word promotion, that is promotion. If if on your social media you say, boom, here's a link to this, that that tells me, hey, <clears throat> you should watch this. If you Correct. Are. You're. I mean, he's got seven. See, Ernie Johnson, you about to get your black card revoked. You about to get uninvited to the barbecue. That's not how that works. Promotion of something is to post it daily. It's to post it weekly, consistently. Sharing the link to something one time is not promoting it. It could mean it's something that he just watched and people kind of want to know what you're into, what you're doing. And he probably just posted, hey, this is what I watched. Now, what some people are saying is the issue is. All right, you could post what link to whatever you watched. However, he didn't post it with any context. All right. He didn't post it and say, hey, check this out. Uh, here's what I agreed with and here's what I didn't agree with. But hey, in totality, go watch it and make up your own mind. All right. That's what they're saying is probably the issue. Which I don't think he should have even had to do that. But we already know that they got these athletes on the lock and key. They're under these contracts, these endorsement contracts or, or these um, sports contracts. And they can say one thing that the organization disagrees with. And that's enough to null and void that contract. That's slavery. That's wage slavery. Million dollar slave shit. You say, boom, here's a link to this. That That tells me Hey, you should watch this. If you Correct. Are. You're. I mean, he's got 17 million Instagram followers, another five million or so on Twitter. You're all over social media. Do you ever put something out there, Shaq, that that does not was, represent something that you feel? I was probably one of the first. All right, here we go. Pete Shaq's coded language. It's boule talk. Social media. Do you ever put something out there, Shaq, that that does not was, represent something that you feel? I was probably one of the first guys on Twitter. And when I realized the power it had, I knew I had to be very responsible. Followers, platform, whatever you call it, I knew I had to be responsible. I I try to make people happy. I try to make people smile. My, my formula has always been the same. 60% to make you laugh, 30% to inspire you, and 10% whatever I'm selling, I'm selling. You have to be... You have to be aware of what you're doing. And you have to be aware that sometimes when you put stuff out, not everybody's going to like it. Some some people are conscious, some people are not. I can tell he's not conscious. He doesn't really care what, what's going on. But us, I know that that some some people are conscious, some people are not. I can tell he's not conscious. He doesn't really care what, what's going on. Some some people are conscious, some people are not. I can tell he's not conscious. He doesn't really care what, what's going on. Some some people are conscious, some people are not. I can tell he's not conscious. He doesn't really care what, what's going on. Yeah, some people are conscious and some people are not. I can tell he's not conscious. He doesn't really care what's going on. But us. But us. Not conscious of what, Shaq? But us, what does he mean he's not conscious 
like us. Do you mean he's uninitiated to the brotherhood of the Boule Shaquille? See, I doubt Kyrie is even Boule Incorporated. He moves too independently. He's a black Hebrew. He's an anti-vaxxer. He is or was a flat earther. So there's no way Kyrie is Boule. And, you know, this was an issue, too, as far as the NBA, when they wouldn't let players come straight out of high school. You know, players were coming straight out of high school and they were skipping the college, not only education, but indoctrination. Right. Guys was coming in straight from high school. So what you had coming into the NBA was a big street and hood element. Think Allen Iverson and Isaiah Ryder. That's why they wanted these players to go to college so bad, you know, so that they can go in there, get initiated, you know, get down with a frat. And, and hopefully that frat would civilize them before they come into the league and have access to that much money. So the fact that Kyrie Irving is not in Shaquille O'Neal's and Charles Barkley's fraternal order means he ain't conscious. And after all of that shit talking and all of that talking about who's enlightened and who's not, come to find out that Shaquille O'Neal's Cityplex movie theaters was showing the movie in Jersey. So did Shaq know that that movie was playing? Probably not, you know, but the manager did. The manager that you have at your Cityplex movie theaters, let it play. Matter of fact, might even have ordered it. So now... Did they take the movie out of your movie theater? Were there complaints about the movie when it was playing in your movie theater? Did anyone complain and say that that movie was anti-Semitic and that that movie needs to come out? And is the manager to your movie theater, Shaquille O'Neal, or the man that ordered that movie for your movie theater, is he anti-Semitic? Because if Kyrie is, so is he. Some, some people are conscious, some people are not. I can tell he's not conscious. He doesn't really care what, what's going on. But us, I know. That. Some, some people are conscious, some people are not. I can tell he's not conscious. He doesn't really care what, what's going on. But us, I know that, that, you know, the game that we used to love and we promote, it brings people together. And it hurts me sometimes when we have to sit up here to talk about stuff that divides the game. Now, now we got to answer for what this idiot has done. Uh, you know, I'm, I stand for equality of all people. I've always been like that. Don't matter what religion, no matter where you're from. I can say shalom, salam alaikum, ni hao, say bon, because that's how I was raised. So I don't, I don't really want to sit up here and answer questions for what he's done. You know, if you're looking at me, it's my job to make people happy. I, I, I can't speak for him, and, you know answer for, for you know what he's doing it's, it's obviously by his answers and the way he answers he doesn't really care he's doing it's, it's obviously by his answers and the way he answers he doesn't really care chuck i think the nba dropped the ball in what way uh, i think he should have been suspended uh, i think adam should have suspended him first of all adam's jewish you can't take my 40 million dollars and insult my religion you gonna insult me you have the right but i have Nah, nah, that's bullshit. Yeah, Kyrie didn't insult anybody's religion. A person's opinion of someone's religion is a protected right, just like the right for someone to have a religion is. So he can have an opinion. Now, if you feel insulted, you know, that's a protected right as well. But that's not Adam Silver's money, Chuck. You know, that's the owner of the Brooklyn Nets money, Joseph Sy. Adam Silver is an employee of the NBA, just like the players are. He could be fired, too. So what you mean you're not going to insult my religion and take my $40 million? That's not Adam Silver's $40 million. 
And that's what a lot of these older players is tight at, too. That these new young players, these niggas making 40 million a year. A year. That's what some of these old cats made their whole career. You can't take my $40 million and insult my religion. If you're going to insult me, you have the right. But I have the right to say, no, you're not going to take my $40 million and insult my religion. So, yeah, this is this is Mahmoud Abdul Rauf all over again. You know, and this is actually the owner, Joseph Sy's fault. Him and Sean Marks, they the ones that went to the damn media. They should have kept it in house, put out a written statement, left it alone. But they overreacted on the tales of this Kanye West anti-Semitism thing. So, you know, yeah, it's crazy. But that's what it is. That's what it is. When you you remember the whole time when they were dealing with the, the pandemic, when they were dealing with COVID and he didn't want to take that jab, you know, and, and they had the same language then. Oh, he dumb. He's stupid. Just play. He he causing trouble. He the reason why the Nets is this. He's the reason why the Nets is that. Like no respect for that man's right. My body, my choice. He just stupid. You know, you're supposed to be a $40 million slave. You make it $40 million, shut up and get out there and play. You can't take my $40 million and insult my religion. If you're going to insult me, you have the right. But I have the right to say, no, you're not going to take my $40 million and insult my religion. I think the NBA, they made a mistake. We have suspended people and fined people who have made homophobic slurs. Uh, and that, that was the right thing to do. I think if you insult the, the black community, you should be suspended or fined heavily, depending. I saw they did the same thing to the kid in Minnesota this year when he made the gay slur. I think you should get suspended or fined. I think him acknowledging the Alex Jones things should have something should have happened with that, too, because that dude's crazy. And I, I can't believe that we ain't talking about that. We're talking about this idiot. And... When you say, when you, if I say, hey, I'm agreeing with this movie, this book, or whatever, I'm agreeing with it. I, I'm not going to put, I, first of all, you know I don't do any social media, but when you're somebody as great as basketball like him, people are going to listen to you, what you say. It's, it, it, then you, and there's some friends, people out there, but like I say, I, I blame the NBA. He should have been suspended. And their conversations are continuing with the Brooklyn Nets, it's too with late the NBA, now. but they're also looking yeah. at, look, they're looking no. at how do we move forward Ooh. at this so we it's don't too go late through now. this again. No, it's not too late it, to Ernie, say, how do we prevent Ernie, this? The, it's the, not the, too the, late the, to do that. Reason, I see, no, look, I see the, what you're hold saying. Hold on, I want to say this. The reason it's too late, the NBA is giving in to peer pressure. When if, somebody, if one of our players do something, they have the right, the team or... The, the, or the league had to do something immediately. If you just get give in to peer pressure, that's the problem I have. This should have been handled already. Can you problem I have? This should have been handled already. Can you problem I have? This should have been handled already. <laughs> All right, y'all want to see what got Butter Biscuit Chuck so P.O.? Why he so pissed off? You, you, you would think Charles Barkley's Jewish, right? <laughs> All right, so, see, but if it's Laura Ingram saying it, just shut up and dribble, then, then there's the outrage. It's racist. But when it's Charles Barkley, who's sometimes black, then it's okay. You know, see, you want to know what the real issue is here? How much does Kyrie Irving make a year? Ever since Kyrie came in the league, he's been making money. But how does much does Kyrie Irving make a year? Kyrie Irving makes $33.3 million a year. Yeah. You know what $33 million a year mean to Chuck? Shut up and dribble, nigga. Take that jab. Yeah. Stop rabble rousing.
You fake activist. What you think you calling Kaepernick now? Yeah. Black Lives Matter. Get back that money. <laughs> Start ranting. Talk about all sorts of shit. Foaming at the mouth. Yeah, that's why Chuck bucking like he bucking. Kyrie Irving make $33 million a year. Now, guess how much money Charles Barkley made his entire 14-year NBA career. Take a guess. <laughs> Kyrie Irving makes $33 million a year. Charles Barkley played in the NBA for 14 years. How much do you think Charles Barkley made in those 14 years? Charles Barkley made $40.6 million dollars in 14 seasons 40.6 Kyrie if you include his endorsements makes that a year I remember with Charles Barkley that 40 mil you tax that at half so 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 you talk about 25 mil came back to him he's paying agents he he's paying all sorts of specialists, whatever he's dealing with, all right? He's been divorced, so then that's half of that. He's a notorious gambler, so yeah, all that shit is gone. <laughs> yeah, all that shit is gone. So, yeah, so now that whole, that new contract he just signed with ESPN, that 10-year, $100 million contract that he was negotiating recently during this whole thing, which got him acting out. Yeah, that's more than he made his whole career. They signed him to a 10-year, $100 million career. So the average is out to $10 million a year. So that $100 million, that's more than he made his whole career. So with Shaq, it's the initiate thing. And with Charles Barkley, it's the shut up and dribble syndrome. Nigga, you make all that money while you riffing. You know, see Shaq, Shaq ain't pocket watching. Shaq is half a billionaire status. Like Shaq is worth 400 million. Okay. We talking Papa John's. We talking movie theaters. We talking Icy Hot. We talking real estate. You know, so Shaq is still making $60 million a year with all his business ventures. Remember, $60 million is more then Charles Barkley he made his whole career. So Shaq has been retired for 10 years and still makes more a year than Charles Barkley made his entire career. Yeah, so Chuck is the little fish. You know, Vanessa Bryant is worth more than Charles Barkley. Damn. Yeah, so I also heard Max Kellerman, Keyshawn Johnson, and Jay Wills over on ESPN. And they brought it up. And even each one of them said that it seemed a little heavy-handed of the Nets management to take such a hard-line stance against Kyrie. You know, the whole suspension thing and everything. Because each one of them said it seemed like Kyrie apologized multiple times. Yeah, so a lot of people saying that this whole Call of Duty list of forgiveness was an attempt for the team to get Kyrie to just wave the white flag, to get him to just ask for a buyout, you know, because the owner, Joe Sy, and the general manager, Sean Marks, they went to the media before they even spoke to Kyrie. And it was Nick Friedle. The reporter who was at the Barclays that started the whole are you anti-Semitic line of questioning. Yeah, it was Nick Friedel. He's the one that started it. So he's the one that should be avoided by all the black NBA players for trying to get through that gotcha moment. You know, but if Kyrie did agree to this whole impossible task, let me explain to you how that would look. Being that I live right here in Brooklyn, right down the street from the Barclays Center. Okay. First, Kyrie would be arriving at the Barclays Center 
with every news outlet in New York City present. The Daily News, the New York Post, the New York Newsday. Shit, even the Amsterdam News would be there. Yeah. Then Kyrie would then get into a hundred Sprinter van motorcade full with the NYPD and Jewish community police escorts with one million people lined up along the route down Atlantic Avenue looking at the spectacle. Then the first stop would be the synagogue on Eastern Parkway in Kingston, where a hundred, one hundred year old men would then give Kyrie the business. It would look like a fucking petting zoo in there. Then it's off to the Holocaust Museum for more shame, blame and explain. All right. Then they would take him for a visit to the block. Y'all know what the block is? Yeah, the block. I remember the movie, The Interview. You know, when Kim Young, whatever, had the fake supermarket, the fake street, the fake. Yeah, they got one of those. They got one of those over here by the synagogue. It's a fake block. It looks poverty stricken. The supermarket look old. They got an old shoe repair store. That shit is a front. Then, after all of that is done, he'd have to go write a 10,000 page apology to the owner, Joseph Sy, begging for forgiveness. And then it would still be up to Joseph Sy to reinstate him or not. And that's why the NBA Players Union had to step in. And interestingly enough, like I said, Jalen Brown, you know, who was the vice president of the Players Association, was also a client to Kanye West's Donda Sports Management, which he had the several relations with Kanye through um, Donda. But yeah, 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 definitely. You know, it's still a good thing that Jalen Brown spoke up in regards to what was going on with Kyrie Irving. All right, so Jason, broken clock is right twice a day, 14 times a week, Whitlock is calling out some people in the mainstream media as well as some folks in the Jewish community for targeting and labeling Kyrie Irving an anti-Semite. So now he's going to break down how he had an issue with Bill Maher. Bill Maher had that movie. I remember he did that shit called Religulous, combination of the word religious and ridiculous. All right. So he went over some of the oddities and, and the uncanniness inside of religion, the stories, the beliefs, you know, mainly focused on Christianity, you know, so he was mocking Christianity. He made fun of Christianity. Jason Whitlock is a Christian. He said that there was no, you know, talk of Bill Maher's an anti-Christian. There was no talk of cancel Bill Maher. There was no talk. And Jason Whitlock, who was a journalist at the time, I forgot what publication he was working for. He said that he did an article to Bill Maher as a rebuttal to him making fun of his religion. OK. Uh, so, yeah, Whitlock right here, he's going to talk about the contrast between his response to Bill Maher insulting his beliefs compared to the response from the Jewish community. You know, and it's all fire and brimstone, no contrition, no forgiveness, no tolerance. It, it, it's just anti-Semite, cancel him, make him lose all his money, all his contracts, his, uh, in a, uh, uh, his ability to, to work, make him a pariah. So why does Jason Whitlock show you the difference between the response? in the Civil War. Let's compare the way I responded to Marr to what's happening to Kyrie Irving, the NBA star, in the aftermath of a sentence-less sentence tweet that listed a religious documentary, Hebrews to Negroes, that many Jews say is offensive. Handful of net season ticket holders sat courtside at Brooklyn's last home game wearing t-shirts that stated fight anti-Semitism. 
The fans told an ESPN reporter the Nets should suspend Irving. Many pundits in corporate media have vilified and demonized Irving. Last night on TNT's NBA broadcast, Shaquille O'Neal called Irving an idiot. Charles Barkley said the NBA should suspend Irving for the tweet. Barkley insinuated the league should discipline Irving for tweeting out something about Alex Jones. Here's the full exchange. It's almost four minutes. Stick with me. Here's NBA TV last night. If, if on your social media, you say, boom, here's a link to this. That, that tells me, or... All right, yeah, 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 we're going to skip through that. We already saw that. So Shaq calls him an idiot, and Chuck says, shut up and dribble. You make $40 million a year. All right, so fast forward. Here we go. Yeah, fair use, fair use. Help me understand this. He retweeted something. There's no sentence. He didn't make any statement. He retweeted something. It this has sparked this much outrage. Wh why? I, I, help me understand this. He retweeted something. There's no sentence. He didn't make any statement. He retweeted something. It this has sparked this much outrage. Wh why? I I. I Right, Jason. Right, 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 right. Like I told y'all, a broken clock is right twice a day, 14 times a week. So he made no statements, no words, no glowing endorsement, yet you have this level of outrage, right? And remember, we're talking about context here. This is about context. We're talking about practice? No, we're talking about context here. So they're saying that he tweeted something out, a link to this video and that he didn't put a context of what it was he agreed with and what it was he disagreed with. So that's the issue. And let me tell you what I think Jason Whitlock is actually getting at, but he got to tiptoe around it because he don't want to be canceled himself. Jason Whitlock is talking about the boy that cried wolf. Yeah, that's what Jason Whitlock is getting at. The boy that cried wolf on the heels of this whole Kanye West thing. You know, now it seems as though the Jewish community is weaponizing the term anti-Semitic. Against Kyrie Irving and Kanye unfairly, prematurely, you know, and, and for the lack of a better reference, excuse me, but it's like a total blitzkrieg. You're losing contracts, you're losing businesses, you're losing endorsements. It's like land, sea, air from every direction, you know? And they're using it against black men, you know? And by proxy, you you know, by, by coming at Kanye and Kyrie the way they are, they're a proxy for black men in totality. And, and, and that's the real issue it seems nobody is addressing. And now it seems like you, you, you see real world effects now because we see Goldie Taylor. She did that article in the Rolling Stone the day before yesterday, which Professor Black Truth or was it the Black Authority? I think it was uh, Professor Black Truth responded to to where she did an article and said young black boys are the root of anti-Semitism in the country. With no factual evidence to where you have no, no evidence no examples of black boys out here committing anti-Semitic acts. And she went on this thing about how black boys are mindlessly following Kanye and Kyrie and their anti-Semitic stances, which neither one of them are anti-Semitic. But she said that they are and that millions of boys are following them, but can't give an example of where some black boys are out here committing any anti-Semitic acts. And at the same time, ignoring dozens upon dozens of anti-Semitic acts done by white nationalists. And this is a black woman, Goldie Taylor, that put out this misinformation. You know, so so it seems like, you know, um, anti-Semitism is the trump card of the deck. You know, you go spade, ace, and joker, you know, but with this situation, you go from sexist to racist and anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic 
trumps everything else. It trumps your sexism. It trumps your racism. And the mere insinuation that you to yourself are Hebrew is anti-Semitic. Yeah. This is what Kanye and Kyrie are both in trouble for, for insinuating they are both Hebrews. Supposed to be 12 Hebrew tribes, right? Yeah. So now saying that you are a black Hebrew is anti-Semitic. Help me understand this. He retweeted something. There's no sentence. He didn't make any statement. He retweeted something. It, this has sparked this much outrage. What, why? I, I tried to watch the documentary. It's a bad documentary. It's boring. It's impossible to follow. It's three hours and 30 minutes. I made it through the first 75 minutes only because I'm a glutton for punishment. The documentarian, Ronald Dalton, is a black Hebrew Israelite, a group of mostly black men who believe they are the true Jewish people. I don't buy their argument. I've had it explained to me two or three times over the past 10 years. I don't get it. Mostly I don't care. It's America. People are free to believe whatever they want. Bill Maher thinks I'm delusional because of my Christian faith. So what? I still like him. I'll still pray that he be saved and come into enlightenment. There's a long, never ending history of Christians being persecuted across the globe. Bill Maher's documentary doesn't make me feel vulnerable. It makes me want to explain and testify. That's what I did in 2010 in my Kansas City Star column. The only thing interesting about Ronald Dalton's documentary is the insane overreaction to it. The overreaction makes me want to rewatch it and try to discern why a Kyrie tweet has this kind of importance. We want to suspend Kyrie over a tweet that doesn't contain one word he wrote? Really? This makes no sense. It cannot be the documentary. The doc is way too easy to ignore for this kind of outrage. My tinfoil hat tells me Kyrie is loathed by the globalists and their corporate media puppets because the system is doing everything in its power to prevent Irving from inspiring other athletes to think for themselves. The system prefers LeBron James and Colin Kaepernick, athletes who do exactly what their handlers tell them to do. Kyrie refused to take the jab. That's his real offense. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver and NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell bullied basketball and football players into taking the experimental medical trials that were advertised as vaccines. <laughs> yeah, you see how he did that, right? You see he did that hard left, boy. It seemed like he was about to call him out, right? Yeah, see, like, he was making a point, right? Then he uh, took that left, like, nope. <laughs> nope, bought up Colin Kaepernick, all of that. Yeah, he's not going to say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You thought he was going to bring up that Hebrew thing, right? Yeah, nigga, nah. <laughs> he know better. Cut it out. You know, I had to stop running away from using my voice and using my platform to, uh, you know, speak on what's true and what's mine. You know, nobody's going to hijack my voice. Nobody's going to take the power away from me that I have for speaking on these things, you know, and don't believe that I'm retiring. Don't believe that, <laughs> you know, I'm going to give up this game uh, for a vaccine mandate or staying unvaccinated. Don't believe any of that shit, man. Like, like really be aware of what's being said uh, before I even get a chance to be on the podium and speak for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like all these people saying all these things about what's going on with me and it's just not true. Pay attention to what's going on out in the real world. You know, people are losing their jobs to these mandates. Uh, people are having to make choices with their own lives, which I respect, you know, and and I don't want to um, sit here and, and play on people's emotions either. Just use logic. 
you know, what would you do? You know, if, if you felt uncomfortable going into the season uh, when you were promised that you would have exemptions or that you didn't have to be forced to get the vaccine. You know, this wasn't an issue uh, before the season started. This this wasn't something that I foresaw coming where I prepared for it. And, uh, you know, I had a, a chance to strategize on what was going to be best for me and my family. I came into the season uh, thinking that I was just going to be able to play ball, you know, be able to use my my talent uh, to continue to, uh, you know, inspire, influence people in the right way. You know, this, like putting this on me is just like, why are you putting it on me? You know, like this, this is not part of, uh, <laughs> you know, what's going on in conversations with scientists, physicians, and doctors. I'm, I'm just a hooper, right? Like I'm, I'm just a person uh, who, who's being utilized as, as an example. For some odd reason, you know, people love to have my name in the mix of just some BS. Kyrie Irving is being held responsible for sharing a link to a documentary that's on Amazon. That is on Amazon. It's being Amazon is a is a platform. It's it's, it's being shared. Um, it's being sold or whatever. So he's being held accountable for that by Nike and whoever else. But Amazon is. Is not doesn't hold no responsibility for nothing for for anything. Just this is the question I need to understand. Make me understand. Um, it's it's the irony of that is just that us in this country we 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 say things and we do things and we we held responsible for the things we say, but yet the irony of that is that our experiences in this country as as American blacks or African American, nobody has felt more horror, travesty, um, has been done wrong, has been hurt, affected, beaten, tortured, maimed, killed, whatever. Nobody's been done worse than us in this particular country right here. And, and I feel like No matter what is said about us, it doesn't hold any higher uh, uh, consequences about anything that is said about us in the same country that we was done so wrong. So I'm just trying to stand so. <laughs> Look, I said y'all going to turn these drill rappers back to the old public enemy and rock Kim's. Y'all got Mano looking for words outside his lexicon trying to compute what just happened. Y'all gonna have these niggas back in the studio talking about Kyrie Irving, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, <laughs> reparations. <laughs> for too long, the black man had a foot on his neck. Now it's time for us to uprise and get some respect. Yeah, all right. Y'all keep it up. Watch. Don't let 21 Savage and them niggas start talking conscious. Because then should it really be over. Bad contracts written by wicked small hats. Now we trying to get our masters back. 21. Yeah, when y'all do get a chance, make sure y'all check out Thought Crimes. And if y'all can, make sure y'all support their platform a little something. I'm not too much into sending niggas money and shit online, but, you know, with them, you know, it's definitely worth the, you know, information you get. You know, it's sad that they lost their monetization because they just talk about too much real shit. They're the only ones that really touch on the small hat subject matter. So, all right. They were doing this, um live stream yesterday and I caught I caught maybe a 15 minute sample I'm gonna try to cut and it down to five they're minutes gonna touch on this campaign that it seems they're on to you know go on this witch hunt to label Kyrie Irving and Kanye West anti-semitic okay yeah so um fair use
where I d disagree with the points that was made on a majority report. I would like people to think about this perspective. I've shared books or clips on things where I did not say the context where I shared like birth of a nation. Someone could say, Oh, sin. Yeah. Uh, you for the KKK, you, you hate black people, whatever. If you put that out, that projection out there first, before talking to me privately or just calmly asking me a question, I'm going to be defensive like Kyrie Irving was. They didn't say to Kyrie, they didn't talk to him behind the scene or come and say, oh, you know, I'm not uh, trying to get in your business, Kyrie, but we're just curious about why did you uh, upload the, the documentary? They called him an anti-Semite before. They labeled him that before he can even speak, which is why he was defensive. Then they got extra triggered because he was defensive, right? Based off of them calling him a name before seeing his full thought process. And I'm like, how do people not comprehend this? It's not him putting the link is not wrong. What is actually wrong is that you call him an anti-Semite before speaking with him. Then you got vicious with him because of his defensive energy but he was defensive because you called him a name you branded him with something evil before he could even speak what it, yeah 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 i forgot what guy it was but as soon as he came to the interview that's the first thing came out the guy's mouth you know kyrie Irving, are you um anti-semitic and, and some people want to hear yes or no, but he sat there saying, I don't know how my name got caught up in something that has to do with something anti-Semitic, he said, but I'm for all races, all cultures, all people. And, and that's a response. That is an adequate enough answer. But it's like, if you don't give us the direct, no, I am not anti-Semitic, he was asking, why was I even included in that type of conversation? And the Nets, Joseph Sy. Sean Marks, they immediately sided with the reporter, said, now Kyrie got to do this, do that. Kyrie suspended five games. Just off of that. So it was Nets ownership that blew this out of proportion because it's Nets ownership that wants to get rid of Kyrie. They want to fuck with his money. Because remember, he's eligible for more money with the Brooklyn Nets than he is for anybody else. So other teams can sign him to a certain limited contract. To where being that he has so-called tenure with the Nets, he's eligible for more money, higher contracts. So basically, this was they moved to force him out of town. Facts. And they just straight labeled him some bullshit. That's hateful. Anti-Semitic. You anti-Semite. Nah. Nah, that didn't fly with them. You got vicious with him because of his defensive energy but he was defensive because you called him a name you branded him with something evil before he could even speak what well, is because their approach was offensive right so if we're so concerned about defense then we also had to be equally concerned about the offense right so for instance if you're trying to get someone to understand your perspective Speech communication classes, uh, you know, many of these uh, things in general, when it comes to actually speaking with people, you would understand about not being offensive, like de escalating. What I saw personally with Kyrie Irving, it was already escalated. And it was escalated so fast for him, he, he couldn't even have a chance to think about what to say. Because right. also at the same time, you just witnessed what happened to Ye. So naturally in his head, being labeled the same thing that they're giving to Ye, and he don't have $2 billion to lose. He has a career. He's in the, he's already came out of the whole vaccine situation. He's already come out of these uh, things. And I think a lot of times uh, what people tend to do by way of social media, it's, uh, it's, it's almost the spectator in the zoo mentality. You know, Kyrie Irving is a monkey. He's an ape. You know, people throw bananas at him, you know, and they, they want to know, why are you mad? And they keep throwing bananas. Why are you mad? In fact, we do that to each other online. People antagonize each other. I felt the whole approach to what went on with Kyrie Irving. It was dehumanizing. Was very, yeah, it was very dehumanizing. It was antagonistic. And for people to take this into consideration, there was no intelligence in it. That's the part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very demoralizing and antagonistic. 
you know, antagonistic is an understatement. Look at this. You know, look at the attempt to escalate the situation. So y'all going to come here and sit on the sidelines of his game in a fight anti-Semitism T-shirt. You know, so you're going to come troll him at his workplace. So yeah, that was a flex. That, that was the Jewish community showing no attempt to de-escalate things, to just straight take it all the way to the tilt. And this right here scared the bejesus out of the Brooklyn Nets ownership. Because now what if they start doing this game after game after game? Eventually there's going to be some words exchanged. Then what? And we already know you can't say nothing to or nothing about the sacred cow. That was scary. Right. So right. there was there was nothing. There was nothing intelligent in their approach. They didn't have a proper inquiry. They didn't even say, hey, let's have a conversation with you and some rabbis. It was a witch hunt. It was a campaign hit yeah, piece. It was, yeah, it was very short sighted and limited. And, and this is what happens when the plateau in society intellectually, because I've always talked about it. You guys heard me talk about this on Thought Crimes. I've always talked about de-intellectualizing hip-hop and why that was dangerous, right? To where we are in these very strange situations. But that is only a mirror of culture because people have de-intellectualized politics. Journalism. And journalism, right? So when they approached him, I saw how clumsy uh haphazard it was and it was like it was very unintelligent overall the, the approach was just stupid so the majority report but this is is being said out of kindness i don't think y'all focused or cared about Kyrie's mental health or psychology you have to think of how it happened he puts this link out there He's attacked by a mob that already brands him anti-Semitic. Anti so then they ask him questions. Are you an anti-Semitic? Behind the brand. Right. And his owner reprimands him publicly and say he's ashamed of him, which is a hit piece. Because how are you saying you're ashamed of him before you even talk to him for the context of why he... So he's defensive because everyone came after him. And an owner who truly is anti-Semitic... Mm. Because he's connected to killing Semitic speaking people in China. Right. So here you have an anti Semite who is the owner of the Nets basically branding someone who, who shared a documentary with no context to it as an anti Semite. This is one of the biggest hit pieces I've seen in modern time. This is around. Right. Sincere ignorance is correct. You know, she said that that's the biggest hit piece she's seen in modern times. You take a man and just all of a sudden label him anti-Semitic. That's the scarlet letter. And now this is costing him his name and his prestige. Everything he's worked for his whole career. So now he's suspended five games. All right. So so he's going to lose about what? Uh, five million dollars in that. He donated half a million dollars. All right. Now he might be suspended, not play the rest of the year, costing him money. We only 10 games in the season. There's over 70 games left in the season. And then he lost his Nike contract, which is worth tens of millions of dollars. For nothing at all. And his owner and the manager, the general manager, Sean Marks, they both threw him under the bus. That's an actual fact. And I'm quite sure he's going to have a grievance with the players union and... and, and look to recoup some of that money if not all of it basically branding someone who who shared a documentary with no context to it as a anti-semite this is one of the biggest hit piece i've seen in modern time this reminds me actually what happened to lucio ball or what happened to uh, a lot of the black entertainers back in the 20s and 30s and 40s that were branded, they were branded to be certain things before they could even come out to contextualize who they truly are. And I think everybody is falling for it. And this is why we're seeing the blowback. And this is why here on our channel, we do stand by. Uh, uh, stand with Kyrie Irving because how y'all did him was dirty. The hit piece was already out. You literally well, have an owner have who's an anti semite, mm -hmm. and no one is talking about that the, the, because okay, because it's 
that's too much like being correct. Remember, we're in an alternative universe. So it's not even just about Kyrie Irving. I, I keep saying this. It is about fundamentally getting rid of intelligent thought, getting rid of wisdom. This is what they're beating out. Thought and wisdom would say, you know, let's have a question, a Q&A with Kyrie Irving. Like I said, it would have been very easy for them to have a conversation with all walks of faith to sit down with Kyrie Irving. Muslims, rabbis, whatever the case may be. Even Josiah, not even to meet with Kyrie Irving. This is mediocrity. Before, before he That was there, mediocre. Very because mediocre. Because it required more effort. To call Kyrie Irving and have a conversation with him. It was easier to condemn him publicly amongst the highly. Yeah, you know why the response was so mediocre and why it was so poorly handled is because they have no respect for the black player. That's why. Even Josiah, not even to meet with Kyrie Irving. This is mediocrity. Before, before he that went was out there. mediocre. Very because mediocre. it required more effort to call Kyrie Irving and have a conversation with him. It was easier to condemn him publicly amongst the highly hypercritical, opinionated crowd. Remember, we've seen the Internet get it wrong all the time. We've seen the Internet put things on people that was just entirely incorrect. incorrect. We've seen people on the internet defend guilty people. We've seen people on the internet kill innocent people's careers. Well, it's like so, what Malcolm X said, the media yeah. is, is one of the most dangerous and, tools that ever existed. It can make an innocent yeah. man look guilty, guilty and, and a guilty, guilty man, man look, look innocent. innocent. Absolutely. And so, <laughs> <Kevin. isn't> <clears throat> yeah, so what is not, it would, absolutely, with Kevin Spacey too, you know. <laughs> uh, so even in this situation, the reason why people... The reason why people are, are exhausted right now, because you got to remember, everybody's punching for a trope, a clickbait. They're punching for um, just just views. So looking at Ben Shapiro and Candace, Over, it was bound to happen anyway, because Ben Shapiro has always been mediocre. He's always been mediocre. There's there's nothing to keep. Even if you just want to disagree with him, I'm not even entertained nor am I pulled enough to sit there and think of like, what, what is he talking about? Candace Owens, on the other hand, uh, some of her talking points can be very irritating, but her presentation, you will say, all right, it's kind of like what you see with Jason Whitlock and his panel. You can disagree with certain things about them, but you clearly see that they have something going on oh, there. Whitlock right? used to really, truly irritate me until recently, yeah. I feel, like he's, I feel yeah. like he's coming into his own too, where mm -hmm. I feel like it's, it's becoming more of a uh, personal balance, balance takes from my perspective what i get out of him is i'm i'm hearing his real opinions versus a personality right yeah, before that's it I felt like a personality. now i don't know how many of y'all would agree with that but they said that they're starting to see a change psychologically in candace owens and jason whitlock but a change for the better you know it might take time for that change to manifest but i i think i know what they're talking about i've heard a couple of takes that they both made that kind of shift away a little bit from what they're known for i i, I tell you this though if that white boy ever leave candace though and, and cheat on her with a white girl yeah she'll fuck around and do a reverse cynthia g So here's a statement that Jalen Brown had made. He said, the Players Association concern is that with no specific guidelines in place for a situation like this, Irvin has received an arbitrary and excessive punishment. The terms for his return, they seem like a lot. And a lot of the players expressed discomfort with the terms, Brown said. Yeah, he so said there's no specific guidelines and it seems like all of this is arbitrary. You know, y'all want him to jump through five, six, seven different hoops. He said he made a mistake. He posted something. There was no distinction. Maybe we can move forward. But the terms in which he has to fulfill to return, I think not just speaking for me, speaking as a vice president from a lot of our players, we didn't agree with the terms that was required for him to come back. And we're waiting for 
this Tuesday meeting to happen to see what comes of it. So, yeah, I mean, it's about time. I mean, the Players Union had to step in there. That's why you didn't see Kyrie Irving really overreacting. You know, it's in the union's hands. And it's a powerful union, you know, so. I guess we've covered this about as much as we can. You know, we know why Shaq came at Kyrie. We know why Chuck came at Kyrie. We definitely know why a lot of these reporters... I don't know. It seems like the most surprising thing of all, though, is Goldie Taylor. That black women tried to take this as an opportunity to jump on the bandwagon to label black men anti-Semitic. And then to throw the little boys under the bus. You know, that, that that's the sad part of this whole thing. All other things in here would be expected. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the actions and the responses of the small hat community was to be expected. They, 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 they don't like us. You know, and any opportunity they get to make an example of us, you know, for, for them kids to go sit there courtside and, and, and harass Kyrie Irving at his job. That is Kyrie Irving's job. We might look at it as, oh, they just basketball players. You know, they went and sat on the sidelines with yarmulkes on and fight anti-Semitism t-shirts. And they weren't doing it to be friendly. Even though Kyrie went over there and said, I appreciate y'all. And you heard them say, thanks, Kyrie. You heard what Jason Whitlock said, right? He said that they interviewed them and them kids still said that they think that Ty Kyrie should be suspended. So... Yeah, you know, uh, nah, nah, I was about to say something, but nah, nah, <laughs> ah, tread lightly, tread lightly, you know I me, mean? but I tell you this, you know, if the Brooklyn Nets aren't careful, They won't be known as the Brooklyn Nets. If you let these people dictate how you run your franchise and how you treat your players. Yeah, they're going to be known as the Brooklyn Jews. He would rather try to flex seal the bottom of his boat that has a giant hole in it rather than just get rid of the boat. The only thing in all of this that is worth salvaging is Kevin Durant. I wouldn't want to have anything to do with Kyrie Irving at this point unless you're desperate for talent, a team like the Lakers, who literally can't afford to turn away good basketball players. There's nobody there that you're married to, and Kevin Durant's obviously still the franchise cornerstone but that particular franchise cornerstone is clearly unhappy and you're incapable of putting around him a real contender of a team yeah they have a puncher's chance if you end up in a playoff series against milwaukee 
you're picking Milwaukee. If you end up in a playoff series against Boston, you're picking Boston in both of those matchups. And bringing in Ime Udoka with all the controversy surrounding him tells me that you would rather have more headache to try to salvage this clearly unsalvageable situation than just take the obvious out here. Brooklyn Nets owner Joe Tsai released a statement on Friday night condemning Kyrie Irving's promotion of an anti-Semitic film. Irving posted a tweet on Friday linking to the movie's Amazon page. Now, Tsai said, quote, I'm disappointed that Kyrie appears to support a film based on a book full of anti-Semitic disinformation. I want to sit down and make sure he understands this is hurtful to all of us, and as a man of faith, it is wrong to promote hate based on race, ethnicity, or religion. I added in a second tweet that this is bigger than basketball. And this prick, you know what? I'll do a whole nother episode dedicated just to him. Bunker TV. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Appreciate y'all coming through. Peace. Question though, would you want to play for Joe Sy and Sean Marks after all of this? I wouldn't.